This is the first video in a series of uh, videos I'm hoping to try and uh, produce to explain my thoughts, mostly my thoughts, um, as well as show a few of the things that, I, that I've been working on, things that I've been thinking about, uh, and also interpretations of the work we kind of depend on. So uh, this first one, um, I haven't actually uh, scripted or prepared any notes or uh, so I'm just going to go through uh, a few things which I thought were noteworthy uh, starting points for an explanation. So what we have here is a, uh, is a bit of a paper, uh, one single half a page, uh, and this describes the experiments done to try and do separation between people, uh, different individuals under different uh, circumstances, different expressions or different lighting or whatever. So. Uh, what we do here is cluster the different people uh, based on characteristics to do with uh, geodesic uh, distances uh, on the face. Now the top row, in this case, I'll try and move this aside a bit just to make it a bit clearer. So uh, at the top row uh, there is the problem of open mouth and closed mouth. So one of the very commonly visited issues is, uh, is this need to basically uh, deal with distances uh, between points where you have the gap of the mouth in between. So uh, if, for example, I say that the, uh, that the mouth is shut, I could actually go above the lips and kind of cross over to the uh, nearest point and find a distance that's minimal to be something very different than if the mouth is basically open. Uh, in which case I have to go all around the lips and try to find the closest point there. So uh, this problem was sort of addressed in all sorts of ways and there are different ways of trying to kind of close the gap or to force the lips to be kind of open all the time. Uh, and once you do that and you calculate all the distances between different parts of the faces and you do have to have some sort of uh, um, you know, the topology in the face. You need to know what the nose is and where the tip of the nose is, eyes, mouth and so on. So uh, once we do all that, it's possible to distinguish based on distances where you kind of, you, you can kind of abuse the, the common uh, use of the word distance and actually describe it as some kind of a similarity uh, metric of sorts. Uh, uh, once you do, you do this repeatedly for many of the points of the face, and that's really a lot of points, probably thousands of, so thousands of points in total, uh, you can actually arrive at some sort of a distinct, uh, uniquely identifying, uh, um, shall we say, a profile of a person based on distances, right? So uh, what we see here in the middle is the uh, basically two clouds of points uh, based on different criteria. So these will show you that the clustering, once we plot them in a high dimensional space between um, you know, well, we have two two cases here. So you have the left and the right. So let's let's take the right cases be as one as being the uh, ones providing better separation between the different cases of the face. Uh, so this basically shows us that if we uh, correctly uh, uh, distinguish or correctly uh, uh, try and measure the points in a way that's that's uniquely identifiable and trans when uh, assignable to it, an, an individual person, uh, we will get very good separation. It will be t possible to tell the people apart, and you will be able to tell the difference between a uh, person's expression and a person's identity. So, telling the difference between a different individuals and different expressions is really important if you want to do uh, face recognition of sorts. Okay, so uh, then it comes it comes to the issue of uh, GPCA. So GPCA, uh, generalized uh, principal component analysis, is associated with. I'm trying to think if I could put a uh, an image on the on the uh, screen on the frame now. Probably not very easily uh, to try and demonstrate. Actually, I could do something here. So hold on a second. And I will try to use a very simple illustration of the just a second so you can see I'm on a certain website that explains that but it doesn't seem to respond to well anyway the right so I'll go back to the previous image uh, what we try and do is to uh, find a correlation between this method and this approach that we see here uh, in a paper in 2006 to the uh, uh, to the problem of GPCA 
uh, where you analyze in a high dimensional space the distribution of the uh, of the points and you try to lower the dimensionality of the points by calculating distances from the means and creating a new uh, system of uh, principal components or axis basically based on the uh, magnitude of the axis themselves or the eigenvectors of sorts and then provide the eigenvalues for each one of the instances you have in the data set. So in a generalized case you don't necessarily have, what, have, to, have to have one single distribution you could actually divide the distributions into a, a bunch of distributions so uh, in this case uh, if you're looking at this specific example I apologize for not moving too much between images because I wasn't playing any of what I'm saying at the moment um, what we are looking at here is a bunch of distributions essentially. Uh, we could actually try and uh, take the approach of PCA and just consider the fact PCA could be applied in some ways theoretically and uh, in a mathematical way to find various distributions and to find a division between them and then try to assign uh, each one of the points or each one of the instances we have to one specific uh, distribution or one specific model. Uh, so what we could try and, and show is a uh, mathematical correlation of sorts or a mapping between the, uh, in this case, the GMDS-based approach of uh, calculating distances on the, on the after doing some embedment, in this case, I think, on a sphere. So in this case, each one of the points that you see here on the faces at the top with the mouth open are going to be embedded into a kind of a sphere uh, because the embedding error, error is going to be fairly low compared to trying to embed it on a plane. Uh, and then you, you know, you, you, you do all your distances, you do you, you distances and use them as a metric of similarity as a kind of an aggregated uh, uh, measure. So anyway, uh, so what we try to see is how to, at least theoretically, uh, show the uh, correspondence between this and PCA uh, as well as to show the performance between a PCA-based approach where you model the faces and try to uh, check the uh, distances or the proportions of the change from the mean uh, model uh, to the approach uh, shown by GM GMDS. So uh, it will be nice to have this correlation at least at a theoretical level uh, and to try and show that both of them achieve something very similar, just uh, doing it in different ways. Uh, so that's that's about it for now, I believe.